Good afternoon, everyone. North Atlantic begins to cool, which is definitely going to affect crop production in Europe and the weather as well. It's on its 60-year cycle, which they forget to tell you in the global warming debate. African dust storms so intense that that's going to be pushing up through Chicago into Canada, of all places. And record amounts of snow in Sweden is going to last the whole summer. They don't know where to put the New Year's accumulation. And a look in at the U.S. ice drilling program and the type of equipment they use to get us that ice core data set. Feel free to jump over to Adapt2030 Twitter channel where I'm starting to load multiple feeds per day. Some of the links and stories I'm not including in the videos. I'm just trying to put everything out that I research throughout the week. As well, the weekly podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, Libsyn, and anywhere else that's hosting a podcast. I'm beginning to upload three times a week, and if I have more material, I'm pushing that up to four to five times a week loading. In-depth analysis and interviews on how we're moving forward in the grand solar minimum. Now, taking a look at the ocean temperatures in the North Atlantic, this is termed as the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. Noah putting out the new chart here. Significant drops in temperature, especially around Nova Scotia. So the area referenced here for the total data set showing water temperatures is definitely turning into its cool phase. This will not only affect pulses of water into the Arctic, which will increase sea ice because as these temperatures decrease, sea ice increases because the melt from beneath is less versus warm water being pushed up in there on its seven year cycle as well. But when we look in longer time frames on the 60 year cycle going back to 1850, look where that cooling occurred, 1970s. We had massive cooling across the planet in the 1970s as well. Wouldn't be related to the water temperatures in our ocean naturally, now would it? Speaking of strange anomalies, Africa dust. And they say could hit Chicago, but the models are showing absolutely it's going to hit Chicago, roll over that and go right up into Canada. Now the article is really strange because it talks about dust can be found on cars mainly in the southern states during these intense dust storms like Florida and Texas. But they completely leave out any reference to Chicago except where they say, oh, the, the skies might be a little milky and hazy. They really don't want to admit this inconvenient chart here that shows something in our atmosphere has definitely just gone out of its regular flows. Because when you're getting this much dust from Africa, okay, we get the storms every year and it usually ends up in South America, possibly in some of the southern states. But generally, it's pushed down into South America. Now these zonal winds are pulling this way past Chicago, way up into central Canada. This thing's going to loop back around over Hudson Bay. That is incredible, the amount of dust and the wind flows pulling this system there. They had to admit what was going on, but they didn't really go into depth to show you what was going on or talk about how strange and anomalous the storm was. But where they are talking about how strange and anomalous the snowfall was in Sweden, Record amount of snow may last the entire summer in northern Sweden. And they were talking about how much snow they received this year, three times as much as the previous years. Now, they're hoping that it does warm up so the snow will melt because where they're currently putting it as snow removal from the city, if there's anything left over there, it's definitely going to fill up so quickly next year because they're predicting more snow next year and they just don't know where they're going to put it. The snow heap is 38 meters tall. Now, for those of you in the U.S., you need to multiply by three to get feet. So it's almost a 120-foot tall snow pile. So when the government of Sweden is already predicting more snow next year, you know they know the same thing I do and we all do, talking about the grand solar minimum intensification. And some of you have been asking, well, where does this ice core data set? Where does all this information really come from? So I wanted to drop you in over here on the U.S. ice drilling program. There's an enormous amount of information out there. And when we talk about ice core data sets, ice bits. 
They have the 2018 spring update up here. They're talking about the different types of drills, the field support, where they're actually drilling this year, what kind of new equipment they're using. So this is just an example out of the new newsletter. They were talking about how they mounted on these toboggan sleds, a new, more streamlined drill. You can find that more on the Ice Bits newsletter for those of you who are interested to really see what's going on and how they're obtaining more and more information. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And I'm really starting to push the social media right now. So join me over on Twitter, Adapt2030, or in Facebook, the Mini Ice Age page.